Hey guys, welcome to, before I say it, I say it a lot, but this time it's for real. Welcome to probably the worst guitar that's seen my shop thus far. Uh-oh, this is definitely going to call for chick flick teal pointer, that's for sure, because... The only guitar I've seen like this in this bad of shape was the Archcraft Archtop. And I'm going to give you a link to that episode up there. We had holes in the body. We had neck problem. We had cracks. The binding was bad. This one's got everything that that one had and more. So this, believe it or not, started off as an Epiphone jamboree from the 60s which is a knockoff of the gibson hummingbird and this guitar had a similar finish to the hummingbird if you look that up on the internet maybe i'll give you a link up there i want to burn up all my cards because we're going to be doing a lot to this guitar but i'll see if i can't give you a link up there or down below if you don't see it in the i card look down below gibson hummingbird so it come with a red and yellow um, sunburst finish. Um, it had a very ornate pick guard. It's an acoustic guitar, no F holes, uh, no arch top, so this is rare for us. Uh, but what happened to this guitar story says that it started off with a little mar in the finish, right about in this area. So somebody took it in to have it fixed, and the next thing you know, there was a, a a crack or something related to that fix that somebody tried to finish with whiteout back in those days, believe it or not. And then somebody just got frustrated, decided I'm going to strip this thing down. And guess what? They used something like zip strip and that melted the binding. And the next thing you know, they're putting wooden wood binding on it. And sooner or later, this guitar, somebody just gave up on it. It ended up in an RV where it was a campfire guitar, and I found it in the front window of a shop. And oddly enough, the owner of that shop, this was his first guitar. So I rescued it out of there, and we're going to do a bunch of things with it. Now, let's put it up on the bench, and we'll go through all the criminal things that are wrong with this. And I'm going to give you some idea what we're going to do, it because once I'm done with it, you are not going to recognize it either in form or function. Uh, don't forget, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't. You're going to see stuff on here that you've not seen before, at least in the junky condition that I get it in, and even worse when I'm done. So give me a like, subscribe, and let's go to the bench. Okay, guys, we're going to do a before of this guitar uh, and you'll see the after later so before but before we do that I kind of want to show you we'll cheat a little bit here this is what this guitar would have looked like when it was new of course the front of it we'll get to that in a minute but looking at the back here we'll start off up at the top let me zoom in here and see what we can do oh look at that okay it's got a set of Schaller tuners these didn't come with it somebody put those on um, but moving down the neck the back of it's okay I'm seeing a little indicator of, of something colored in there maybe a shim at one time but the back of it's pretty solid let's see if we can zoom back out slowly here back of it's pretty solid we're going to see the binding issues and stuff but there's no cracks on the back there's a couple little nicks and stuff like that but we're not going to worry about that too much so let's flip this around all right here's the front of the guitar and it has some issues believe me um before we get rolling here Remember, this is what we started off with, something like this, and now 
we have this. Let me make a couple adjustments here um, and see if we can zoom in here. You can't hardly tell, but there's on the front, there's cracks here where, let me see if I can do this without kicking the camera, maybe not. You can see that the top of the guitar is loose in several spots here. We can see that the finish has been stripped off. It's got a couple of deep gouges here. There's a couple of cracks and splits down here. The binding is in terrible condition. I'll, I'll show you that. Um, the bridge got completely tore off of it. There's a bridge up here, but this is not the original bridge. This come off of Gibson. Um, the fret markers are gone. Somebody replaced those, I think, once everything got stripped down with the zip strip. Um, that's kind of what happened. Let me flip this around and see if we can get in on the binding. Okay, the original binding is gone. Um, apparently, again, there was a spot somewhere here on the body um, down in that area down there. And it got to the point where somebody just decided to strip it and refinish it. Um, the binding is gone out of uh, the sound hole, and the binding on the side here is in really rough shape because it's just kind of made out of wood. Somebody cut wood strip and glue it in here, so we're going to replace the binding, um, and we're going to do some work on the neck because if you look at the neck, the action on the neck is really low. It's acoustic guitar, um, and... I've got that much to work with on a bridge area on the soundboard that is completely trashed. So I'm going to find a way to raise up that fingerboard. And um, I'm going to go through a couple of things here pretty quick and kind of show you quick little glimpses of what I'm going to do. And let's start with the fingerboard. So let's get this stuff off here i like it when people tape the original parts on here i like that okay um we'll just get these out of here now the idea is is that i'm going to want to raise this fingerboard here up some and i'm going to do that by removing this fingerboard and adding this piece of unfretted material underneath. That will raise up the fingerboard that much and bring it up. Now, I don't want to go into a big ton of detail here, but what this involves is taking these spatula tools, body knives, and you just basically heat up the fingerboard um, with a hot gun. Some people use an iron on the frets, but I like this heat gun. And then you're simply going to depend on the hide glue that they put under here to break loose once you heat up uh, this knife, which you can do by blowing the heat gun directly on it, or um, running the heat gun up and down here and um, you don't want to burn your fingerboard or dry it out to the point where it cracks but you're basically going to start up here and work this loose and get this under here and come all the way down now the one thing you don't want to do is you want to make sure that when you're doing this you want to make sure that your fretboard is the only thing cut and loose because if you get down into the wood on the neck and start getting it cut loose the next thing you know you'll have a broken neck or a cracked neck that you can't fix and that's why we're starting here so let me work on this and get it to a point where you can see what's happening and I'll catch up with you in a minute okay we're getting really close I put a clamp up here and that kind of causes this to teeter-totter right here and we're just right down in here this is the last part to get cut loose and I'm going to heat this up one more time and see if we can't get this to happen live.
Again, watch your wood very closely. Make sure it's not discoloring any more than this is already. Let's get this in here. We are really close now. There we go. Look at that. What this did reveal, there's a little bit of breakage right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this truss rod and everything works before we take this loose. Um, and then we're going to glue this down and sand this and come off pretty cleanly. Then, like I said, what we're going to do, once that's done, We'll line this up back to where the nut went. Make sure that this fits over the top like so. We've got some cutting to do and some shaping to do. But we've taken our fretboard from this to this. And that gives us some opportunity to do something with the bridge. And I think you're going to be surprised about that. But there we go. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about now that this fretboard is off and before we put the other one on um, is the binding. Again, this binding, the original binding, got melted and ruined by a paint stripper when somebody tried to refinish this guitar. Um, ingeniously, they took uh, some furring strip and cut it down and made their own binding and that's pretty cool, but the problem I have here let me see if I can whip this around a little bit. Is this top here is starting to come off. And so we're going to redo the binding. Now, I'm just going to give you a couple little glimpses of what I'm trying to do here. Let's turn it a little bit. There we go. How's the camera? Oh, good. Um, I did, did a whole binding job on um, the Archcraft arch top, and I'm going to give you a link. There's two episodes that shows you start to finish, but kind of what you do here is whether you're using wood binding, you don't run across wood binding very often, but you can heat it up with your um, heat gun. This works really well on old celluloid binding, but again, when you're using one of these, you want to pay attention that you're not heating this up and scorching, especially if it's got finish on it. That's bad news. These things will ruin a finish faster than paint stripper, I think. But the whole idea is you use any number of tools to get a line started where the binding is cutting loose. That helps. A razor knife, um, you might mask this off. But it's a lot of chisel work getting in here like this. And then a lot of filing work. If you take shortcuts on anything here, you end up with a mess. Okay, guys, we have all the binding off of the top of the guitar. And remember, this binding was homemade little furring strips, maybe even plywood. So, again, as you saw in the last little clip, we scored around the edge with a razor knife, like so. Did a little bit of it this way, scoring. Then we took our chisel, handy chisel, and then popped the stuff loose. And then we used this Stumac knife. This is a great, or file, excuse me. Once you get this channel right by doing this, this thing will follow the channel, and when you're filing, you want to look at a whole area with the radius. Don't sit here and worry about this little area. When you do your filing, try to follow the radius for as long as you can, and that will make it nice and smooth because sooner or later, the binding is going to fit in here. And I've got this little piece of binding on a, a screw, so I can sit here and gauge this and kind of see... Is this fitting? I just put my finger here on the side of the binding and I can feel if something is sticking up or not. This is a handy little tool. Of course, the binding comes in big strips like this, like so. And then, 
of course you put it on here you use binding adhesive and then you're going to use this kind of stuff um, this stuff wants to jump all over it has a mind of its own like a slinky bouncing all over the place but yeah you get that that's going to look good of course we're going to do this finish after we're we're done we're going to do the finish first and then put the binding on at the end now i want to show you something pretty cool here um, we call these five 15 gallon plant containers in california um, we don't use burlap and stuff like that we've moved up to petrochemically based cancerous warning pro uh, products but this is yeah this is a chick flick teal pool noodle don't tell my oil field friends i said that little sections there and if you put this on here like so and one over here you can put the guitar and work binding and do all this stuff i've been telling you this dangerous stuff while you're watching snapped now do you know what snapped is well if you don't guess what sooner or later there's going to be a story on there about some chick freaking out and killing her husband for owning too many guitars or actually spending money to make one like this now i want you to see here the top is coming off of here so what i'm going to do before i start worrying about binding or, or finishing or anything is I want to take and get this stabilized. Now, when you see this crack here, or this top coming apart, where it ends, where that split ends, nine times out of 10, you will have something starting to run off here, running split. This hasn't done that yet, which is good. Okay, you're gonna need some really fancy specialized things like toothpicks, because we wanna open that up a little bit like this we're going to want to get some glue in here but whenever you're working with glue we're going to use hide glue in the glue bot because when you squeeze it see it comes up there as soon as you let go it's gone um, when we're squeezing this in here we don't want to globbing all over the place and creating a mess on the inside we just want to get enough in there next thing i need you to see is this isn't lining up, so I have to mess with this. It's amazing how thin these sides are on a guitar, but we're going to focus on getting this lined up. It's okay if a little bit of this is sticking up over here because we're going to be able to file that down. Anyway, whenever you're working with glue, high glue, you're going to need some water. Warm water is good. Uh, you need a Bill Abel cup. Do you know who Bill Abel is? Well, he plays guitar and does awesome pottery. Anyway, paper towel and Bill Abel cup full of water. Next thing is you've seen us use the suction cups. They're handy. Uh, they got an edge on them. Of course, whenever we're putting stuff down in a crack, we can start once we've got our glue in there and go along like this and push the glue in there. And then of course, we've got some handy stuff like these body knives and then we can smear the glue in there and make sure everything's okay but these go on here like so so once i get the glue put in here i'm going to watch how the body is lining up there like so and then i'm just going to clamp these and not make them so tight that they ruin everything but the glue will be in there i also have long ones that can go across the body if needed and keep everything this way and this way i'm sure that looked messed up but anyway i'm going to go through glue all this up and let it sit we're going to make sure that the top is stabilized before we go to the bottom taking the binding off both top and the bottom and having cracks like this wherever they might be is a recipe for disaster all right, there's our guitar. We're going to take the clamps off. You want to make sure that you've got something handy like this to put these clamps in as you take them off. Okay? I'm going to be using on my guitar about that size. There's corks there. So I can just put them in the can like that. Clack around, make a bunch of noise. 
Hey, did you notice I have my Mr. Airplane Man shirt on? Hey, Margaret and Tara, I hope you're doing good. I'm going to give you a link below to some of their music. You're going to love it. Make sure you support the artists I call out because they put me here. Okay, anyway, <laughs> the clamps are off. <clears throat> we glued the top down and we did the channel and we... So we are going to sand this, and um, it's going to be kind of a rough job. There's some high spots here, and I'm not sure where everything is. So I'm just going to take some sandpaper I got laying around, and I'm just going to go along and work it in sections until I get everything done right. No, wrong. I have a system as usual. I've got this really cool stuff called sandpaper in a roll, and it is... 400 grit this is a good grit it's got adhesive on the back now I would really like to be able to sand all of this at once well how do I do that well the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find a piece of wood that's as wide as the widest part of the guitar okay so I can do this you see what's going to happen here uh oh I got some high spots I should get rid of right away I might just do that uh, but if I could have a piece of sandpaper that would float this whole top part, it would, I would be able to sand this all at once. And while I was, I could see where the high and low spots were. Wouldn't that be handy? I need 17 hands, but I'm going to take this piece of rolled up sandpaper. And I am going to lay it at one end. And I'm going to make a cut right there. And then I am going to do that. You see that? Then, you know, I really shouldn't be using this guitar top as a table because the finish is so fine, right? And I'm going to take this. I'm going to peel this off. You want to be careful here because if this rolls up, you will have wasted your time. You see that finger technique? Yeah, no problem. So I'm going to put this about in the middle like this. And I'm going to press down and then I'm going to fold up this side here like so. And I'm going to make sure that edge is nice and crisp there like that. I'm going to do something like this. Uh, or maybe I'll do something like this. And there goes the money for the Manny Petty. You're welcome. Always saving you money with my brilliant tips. And I'm going to do that. And look what I have here. That's not coming off there. I could have trimmed that to the end, but I won't. Now I can just take this and go like this. Look at that. You see what's happening? There's some, there, it's sanding there and there and there but not there, but I can just start all the way up here and just sand away like this. My sandpaper gets a little bit wore. I can just turn it over like this. And this is how I'm going to do the entire front. And I'll okay, guys, this bridge was here like this. Um, we've done some sanding. This is going to go away. we still got a little drop down there, which is good for this bridge. Now, you have to remember that when I put a floating bridge on here, yeah, I'm going to put a trapeze back here. Are you kidding me? Why wouldn't I? Well, other than it'll crater this right here, and especially since up here the fretboard is going to come up some, there's going to put a great deal of pressure here that it was never intended to have. And if you look right now, my great super Herculean strength is making this bow a little bit. So what are we going to do? Well, there are holes here from where things used to fit. And I happen to have this mahogany dowel. Oh, look, it hit some. It's hitting the bottom of the guitar. You thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, I can just put one of these in over here and then cut it off, sand it down, and then I can put this here in about the right place where our adjustment thumb screws are. It will have additional support, right? Wrong. All this is going to do on the other side of the guitar is focus all that loading where that is. 
right on those two spots and don't be surprised if you get cracks in the back of the guitar but how are we going to do this well I'm going to take this piece of wood here I've already examined the insides and found out that there's not something in the way down in there now I'm going to take my little square and I am going to do that and do that. I'm going to kind of guess where the middle of this thing is, like so. Now, I'm going to take a Forstner bit that's about the same size as this. And I'm going to drill down into here, but not all the way through you see that what do you know this fits right in there like that imagine that now I'm going to take this I'm going to drop down to there and I'm going to mark up to about here because I want plenty of room to work with then I'm going to cut this off using this awesome twelve thousand dollar guitar as a workbench, right? And I'm going to cut two of these the same, about the same size. See that? Like that. And then we'll do that. You with me so far? Good. Okay, only a complete derelict would do the next part. So watch very carefully. I'm not going to show you twice. You take hide glue in your glue bot. You take your dowels, dowels, check. You take some painter's tape, preferably wide, about two pieces. You put it on the guitar top and peel the finish off. You put sticky side up this here, like this. You do that behind both of these. Do you see that? This is very important. You put hide glue in the holes. Said amount of hide glue. You don't fill it all the way up. Now, watch this part. Be ready to com be completely and utterly disamazed. You're going to now use this $1,200 contraption finally for something useful. You're going to put this down in the hole. You're going to see the hole that you drilled with the Forstner bit, you are going to put this in there and you are going to fit it into that pocket that you drilled right there. You're going to put the tape up over the side and then you're going to spin it around and do the other one. Okay. Those are down in there now. They are both sitting on the board, the little piece of wood that's riding the bottom of the guitar. We're going to let these dry. We didn't glue the bottom yet because once these are dried onto that board, then and only then can we pull these up, put high glue on the bottom, then push this down, and then the whole scrap apparatus will be affixed to a larger base of support at the bottom of the guitar. You are welcome. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, I know I got people saying, how do we know you're telling the truth? Come on, dudes, it's me. Ooh, look at that. Just like I said. Uh-huh. Pigs say that when you kick them. All right, guys, it is the next day. This thing is dry. All I got to do is get a brush of some type and move this down a little bit. See it going up and down in there. And I can put some hide glue underneath there, push that down, and get everything ready to go, right? Wrong. There's a little catch. I am going to put a trapeze tail piece on the back end of this thing, and that presents a problem. This thing was not built in the ass end heavy enough to put one of these on it where everything's pulling. I'm going to have to reinforce the back end of the guitar. 
That means I have to put a wooden block through here. And that wooden block might be wider than this. So if I go ahead and put this on now, I have just created a problem for myself. So I'm going to pull this up, get it out of the way, and let's take a look at what I got to do to get the back end reinforced. There's also some electrical stuff. This thing is going to be hot rotted up. It's going to have a Gretsch pickup. It's going to scream. So this is one of the places where you work yourself into a corner. I do have to admit I like the sound hole better than trying to work through F holes. That's for sure. But let's flip this over and I'll show you what I got to do. Okay, if you think that this looks familiar, you're right. We had an episode called Tore Up Tailpiece. Uh, in the playlist on the Texas junk pile where we reinforced this because here's what we're going to do We are going to put this pickup on here. It is barely riding just above the um, Binding groove We're not going to want that. Okay, we're not just going to go in there and hope that we catch something uh, this is the main one, and then we are going to run a an input jack right here, and we're going to have to do some grounding. I want this to be solid. I don't want this twisting off, turning over. So we're going to put this heavy piece of hardwood right here, like so. Now, if you remember on the Texas chunk pile, this is curved slightly, like so. So we would take a pencil, make a curve, and then round it over, or crown it like frets, and put it inside but I've already checked there is a thin board in there already not something I want to attach everything to and start reaping on with heavy 60 strings remember heavy strings is what caused this to mess up in the first place so we're gonna beef this up but we don't need to radius this off because the board inside there is flat so how do we do this well first off we can't put this in here like this we got to go in from the sound hole. That's for sure. We got to make sure that this thing will get by the bracing because there's bracing sticking up that tall everywhere in there. So this thing has to clear everything so it doesn't matter if it goes in like this. But back here, it's got to come up like this. So let me show you how I did this. All right, here we go. The first thing I did was took a pilot bit and drilled a hole right here. That hole is big enough to accept the Dowling. Remember the Dowling? Not the Kevin Dowling fitness show, just the Dowling. I drilled all the way through very carefully so as not to blow out the back. It goes all the way through. As you can tell, it didn't go in very far. Thus the need to make one of these that will sit right here. Now notice that this is not square, it's oblong, but this hole right here will fit right there. And notice that the top of this sits at the bottom of the binding. We know that the kerfing goes to about here and here and that this spot is just open block. This will be on the inside and will clear the kerfing. Now I want you to notice that was same said pilot bit. There we go. I drilled a hole in the dowling to put in a toothpick crossways. You see that? This isn't any kind of toothpick. You know it's a bacon flavored toothpick. Okay, now to get this, I had to remember there are braces on the top and bottom and this has to go through all that. It either has to go through this way or this way. It doesn't matter, but it will have to be turned the right way in the end. Now, what I did was I measured that distance. I know by using this gadget here how tall thick the body is. I extrapolated that. I measured everything off. I found the center. And of course, I used the metric system to do that because if you look very carefully, always pay attention to the background. Do you see a license plate back there? from Quebec, Canada, 1956, eh? Right there, pay attention, always pay attention. We know that our freeway abutment overpass bridge support for this 
is ultimately going to be pushed down and glued to the bottom and then these are going to be cut off and we are going to put this in we're going to cover this up with metal but this has to go in first so we will pull this up look at that modern marvels have you ever seen that show now we need to get this down in here like so and pull it back all the way back there so i'm going to take my dowel I am going to not knock over the camera and I'm going to put the dowel in through here. I am wandering around between the camera stand. There I hit it. I'm going to look down in here and what do you know? There it is. Can you see it in there? Okay, now we're going to take our block and we're going to put hide glue in the hole. Remember that I have paper toweling there so it doesn't drip all over and ruin the wonderful finish. Remember our friend bacon flavored toothpick? We're going to smear that around like so. Don't throw this away. It becomes critical now. Now watch as this disappears into here and is placed on the rod. Push it through until the slot comes out. We insert bacon flavored toothpick so things can't slip off the end and we bottom out. We slide everything back until bacon flavored toothpick does its job. Now we take the world's strongest antique clip once everything is bottomed out there and we make sure that the dowel and the rod are not moving anywhere. Now we're going to leave it sit. Oh, nanai, little nanai. Like so. Do you see that? Hey, erector set, get out of the way, son. Okay, guys, let's catch up. I have push the freeway abutment bridge support thingy that we built for here. I've glued it to the bottom of the guitar and then I have clamped it down where uh, the dowels that go down to the base of it are being clamped down by these things. If you do not have some of these clamps, they're awesome. They look like some kind of Pac-Man thing. You see that? Anyway, these are great because they will go down inside of a sound hole. Not much for F-holes. And you know I just usually like to work on guitars that have F-holes. Anyway, we're going to put those aside because we're going to need them. And now, notice I got the bean bag below the guitar. So I got room to work. And now I'm starting to pull this kind of stuff off the guitar. Can you see that? Yeah, we can see it. And I'm going to put that aside where it gets nice and scratched up so it doesn't look like Worm's first date. Now, the most important part about this is we are going to put the floating bridge on here. And we need as much space as we can get. Now, what I don't want to do is leave all this floating where it does this. You want to remember that, especially acoustic guitars, the ones without the sound holes or without the F-holes, and even guitars with F-holes, you want to remember, they started off as acoustic guitars, that's why their bodies are so thick. When you started putting pickups on thick body acoustic guitars, the vibration is really bad, and the feedback, so that... Uh, that's where that comes from. So, we want to remember that part of this guitar being thin is it's going to want to have a tendency to crack and that kind of stuff. So that's why we're going through all this effort to reinforce it. I need to get this bridge. Remember, we're going to put, let me grab my stuff here. We're going to put another board under the fretboard to give us some height there. So I need this to be as low as it can be. And I'm actually now going to glue these pegs, these dowels, to the top here. So what I'm going to do, 
Remember this? This was a mock-up from the episode about the Highway 41 guitar. Um, you remember Lay's Cafe, great place to eat, I bet. Anyway, this guitar, the, the that specific guitar ended up going to Gallia Volt. She's got a number of gar, our, my guitars. You can see an episode right up there right about now if I've got any cards left. Anyway, we are going to use this and lay it on here like this because I'm going to want to pull the top of the guitar down as much as possible. So we're going to take these clamps, we're going to open them up, and we're going to get this like so. And I'm going to make that guitar top go down like that. You see that? And then we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. This piece of neck cut off helps us push that down. Now, now that I've seen where you can't see it, I'm going to take some hide glue and I'm actually going to glue the dowels, the tops of the dowel to the guitar. Now when you're doing this, you always want to make sure you got some paper towel and a water supply so you can clean up some errors. My water supply today is Hag Coffee. Okay guys, let me catch you up here. Um, we've done a ton. We have fixed a hole in the bottom. We have gone around and patched up any rough spots. We've sanded everything down. Um, we're getting this, ready, this thing ready for a finish and that's what I'm going to hide from you because this is going to be shocking. You want to remember these acoustic guitars have a very thin top. They weren't meant to be putting pickups on and pickup controls and having a neck that would take heavy string weight. So we're constantly beefing this thing up. I've put a block in the back on the inside. I've put a freeway overpass abutment. Now we're sucking down the uh, top of the fingerboard so we can or the top of the soundboard so everything will line up I need to raise the string height there is going to be a trapeze tail piece there's going to be a lot of pressure here so we've beefed this up I mean we have to think down to are these tops really meant to put volume control potentiometers I know they're not so we even had to get down into using dental floss and these patent chick flick teal wooden discs to pull up through a dental floss to reinforce that. So, Okay guys, let's catch up. On the back of this thing, you're going to have to trust me a lot. I have this thing masked off because we're going to finish it and we're going to try to put what looks like a messed up sunburst that kind of matches uh, what went on the guitar. Now, you know that uh, from what you've seen thus far that we have beefed up the tail block so we can put a strap button pickup we're going to put, put a trapeze tail piece we're going to have to run wiring through here to ground the strings through the trapeze um, we have put in holes for the volume and tone control and because this thing is so thin it wasn't made for this kind of thing so we've uh, put support underneath uh, these in here we have done our freeway overpass build up of the bridge area not only is it attached to the bottom of the guitar but we pulled this down with clamps and made this solid so this isn't going to go anywhere and it's low enough for us to raise up that fingerboard put a pickup here and a floating bridge. Um, the point of the matter here is before we start spraying or finish we want to get everything done that we're going to need to do in this area because the, the uh, fingerboard and everything is going to butt up to a finish. Now you can see that this isn't uh, taped off. You always tape off the sound hole please guys because the stuff inside the guitar, the labels, the markings, that stuff gets messed up if you don't. But 
main thing here to recognize is there's a lot of tape in the binding channel. What I don't want to do, what this guitar got in trouble for in the beginning was a little blemish somewhere over here, a little spot on the binding, and the next thing you know, somebody's using stuff on it, it eats away, they strip it down, and it's a forgotten guitar, only to end up in my shop. So when you're taping this stuff off to do the finish, spend your time protecting the binding channel so it can be wood. You're going to have adhesive and binding to wood. That's what you want. So I'm going to get outside. This will be... You might have noticed we got some little bit of overspray here that we don't want. We can take some spray, put it in a can, spray it directly in a can, and take a chip brush, these throwaway chip brushes, and then I just do some yellow and come along here like this and catch that. But what we're going to do is we're going to age this thing now. You want to remember it's at least 50 years old, the paint on it. So we're going to get into my plethora of my voluminous uh, collection of different grits, carefully arranged. We'll start off with something like a hundred and we'll come along here. And we wanna knock this Ronnie McDonnie paint down some. You wanna remember that where things wear, you do not wanna make this uniform in how it's aged because that's not how it happened all right we have taken a little bit of the ronnie mcdonnie out of the mcdonald's guitar i mean the jamboree junk pile you can see here if i get this close enough that it's gotten kind of dull it's got some scratches in it it's got some wear up on the top there and where the guitar would have bounced around so now what we are going to do is we're going to take a chip brush. We're going to make sure we got some water with us to clean up if we need to. And some paper towel. Now, this is not about painting the guitar. It's about accenting the scratches and stuff because there are ridges in the wood of the guitar. And you can see as we sanded it away, those ridges become visible. We want this paint to drop down into those ridges. Now we're going to go ahead and sand it right back off. Less is more here. Less is definitely more. Just start off like this. Make sure our brush is a little bit damp. That's going on a little too. And we're just going to go along and run with the guitar like this with me we're going to do the same thing to the sides here and there get a little bit along the edges like so again most of this is going to be sanded off if you think you got a little too much somewhere like right there just come along with your paper towel and wipe some of it off your paper towel is wadded up, that's better than if it's smooth. Again, random is best. Sure. Now we just wait for this to dry. If you want to speed that process up, you just get your heat gun out, turn it on mid-range and just run over like so. Okay, now we're going to go back to our sandpaper, and believe it or not, we're going to make most of this disappear because what's going to happen is what's left will be down in those grooves. That's what we want. So we just want to knock what we can see off on the top, like so. Get rid of just about everything we put back on there, and that will make 
the grain pop and look old like barn wood. That's what we want. So the last thing you want to remember is I'm going to take a 220 sanding sponge. You want to remember that if you're sanding red, it's going to turn red. Uh, if you're sanding yellow, it's going to turn yellow. So if you take a sanding pad and you've been using it on red and you pull into the yellow, it's going to turn it yellow. You don't want that. So we're going to take a little bit of water here. I'm going to flip the sponge over, make sure it's wet, and do our final touch to the yellow area. You see that gray is blending in to look aged. And then what we want to do is part of the sponge that's reddish. There we go. Now we want to take that and work circles around where our sunburst edge was. That'll blend some of that yellow red together. Just keep track of where your sponge is all the time. Okay, so the last thing we are going to do is very carefully put on some antiquing glaze. We are just going to put this on and wipe it off almost right away. And it gives a dark tint and takes the gray away and deepens the scratches and all that. No more Ronnie McDonnie. Also it gives it where that edge is, where the dirt, where the wood is worn. It looks like the wood is aging there. There we go. Easy money. All right, while we are waiting for our custom aging job to dry up or dry out, whatever it is, part of this whole deal was we want to put a floating bridge on this guitar. So we're going to put this piece of fretboard on top or uh, on top of the neck and then attach the fingerboard to it. So uh, this is something you do need to overthink. Um, first off, you don't want any bumps and weird spots in either of these. So I took some 400 grit paper and I'm just going to run over this and make sure there's nothing in here because guess what? If there's a bump or an errant piece of glue or something left over, when you put this on here, it's going to start doing this and then you get frets out of line and everything's a mess. So you get a wow. Now this thing does have a truss rod, but we're going to do everything we can to try to get this to work. The main thing here is we're going to cut this off. We're going to lose a few frets here, but we don't need to be cutting any of this off. That is going to change our intonation. Between the front of the knot and this is really critical to our intonation. So, um, now it's just kind of spreading glue. Uh, and clamping. When you use these clamps, they're pretty handy. You just you slide them, and when you get them close, you do this. We'll use these. Let me get some glue out, and I'll show you what it looks, what it looks like when it's glued up. All right, there we go. Glue took. Everything looks nice and flat. It held. Um, now I'm going to have to take and cut this edge down, cut these edges down on a bandsaw, and then I will um, take it to a belt sander and get this where it needs to be. And then we'll figure out where it's going to go on the guitar neck. We're going to have to cut off a few of these frets here because we are going to put a pickup right here that will fit between the sound hole and the bottom of the fretboard. All right, that turned out nice. I got some extra elevation. You see there? Um, 
Now, the knot ended right there. So I'm going to put these little clamps right here, and that will keep me honest about where everything is going to go. I need you to see, I'm going to put this low profile pickup between the sound hole and the fingerboard. And as we look, it just gets right barely up. The fingerboard gets right barely up over that. So that will be placed nice. But the issue is, I'm going to have to lose a couple frets. So I'm going to have to cut the fingerboard at the end of the 17th fret right there. So I'm going to cut that off. And then we're going to talk about gluing the fingerboard back onto the neck. There, there's a close-up for you. I had masked this off when we painted the body, but it's going to be right about there is where my fingerboard is going to end. So I'm going to cut this off straight, and then we're going to glue this up. All right, that neck came out looking pretty good. I've got some heightened elevation here. Now what we got to get on is we got to put a coat of clear finish on, if you call this a finish here. We're going to cut a piece of metal that goes on uh, the headstock. We're going to pin it down. There's going to be a coin here. I'm going to have to make a, a truss rod cover that matches the... Uh, people are calling this the Ronald McDonald guitar and the Mickey D guitar and wonder when the McRib is coming back, but whatever. Uh, i got to make a truss ride cover there. Um, I'm going to strip the tuners off here. i got to put something in the back of this thing, so you're going to get little glimpses of details as we go. All right, guys, kiss the back goodbye. Our friend Earl Lube Paste is taking us on a road trip. All right, guys, let's catch up. I have put this map of Quebec on the back of the guitar. Um, there is Montreal right there. We have put a couple coats of what we've used here. And then let's flip over and see. You've seen this. I've also coated this. Notice it's kind of dull. I use a satin finish. But we have spent a lot of time getting to the next point. And that point is binding. I am thinking this is going to be cool. Look how that sets that off. Let's talk about this for a minute. You know that when we put our finishes on here, we got a little bit on the binding channel. So I want to go along the whole binding channel here. Okay, so, and here, I want to get all of this touched up because we are going to use bind all and we are going to use binding tape and if 
this is set in here right, this is going to be an easy job. So I'm going to go around and make sure everything that I've done does not have finish on it. I want this to stick. Here. Okay, so you've got binding here. You want to make sure that it warms up a little bit. You don't want this stuff to be cold and you want to find the middle of it. So we put the ends together and we draw it down and get close. You see that mark right there? I also have a mark right there. That is the center of the guitar. So we're going to line this up like so. You with me? Oh, look at how that sits right in there. If I've done this right, there's not going to be a lot of trimming to do. We'll just have to take the, the edge off it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the center of the binding. We don't want to patch binding over in here or here or start on one end and go all the way around. We're going to start in the middle. So next thing is you don't want to be looking for tape every time. So you're tearing this off. I'm going to show you another handy little gadget here in a little bit when we get rolling. So we're going to put all these little strips. We want a ton of these strips ready to go. So when it comes time, we don't have to overthink this. It's got a ton of these set up here. I'm going to leave this side uncovered because it doesn't have the metric system, and that way you can, it's a constant reminder of the miserable life you live if you depend on this instead of the metric system. Anyway, so... This is not rocket science, but I do have my Northrop Grumman rocket science pencil right here, just in case. Now, this bind all is great stuff, but you really, really need to have paper toweling and stuff ready for accidents. This is not a fine guitar. You might have come to that conclusion on your own, right? So... If you make mistakes with binding adhesive on an expensive guitar, you might have to refinish the guitar and you don't want that. And open up your binding. You don't want to make you want to make sure you don't squeeze the tube. In fact, you might waste a little bit put putting some out. And then you're just gonna go along and you're gonna put some in the channel here like so. There we go. Now it's starting to flow a little bit because the tube isn't full. If you have a full tube and you squeeze it, first thing that's going to happen is going to run out. So the working time on this, you got some time. It's not like super glue, but you don't want these lumps and stuff here. You got to just have enough, and you'll figure out what enough is as you get going. Now we're going to take and find the middle right there. And we're going to, this stuff is going to try and wrap around and like a snake or an alligator, okay? Put that there like that. Wipe off the excess. I'm not going to get too far ahead of ourselves. We want to make sure that right where we're working, right there in the middle, that lines up with that mark. See, it's trying to jump all over. You'll see that once we get rolling here, it will get easier as long as you put the work up front. Now, I'm going to start right in the middle. I'm going to take some of my binding tape. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it there and I'm going to pull it. Okay. I'm going to work this way now. It's going to take a ton of this stuff. And you want to make sure you pull it like that and that you don't have a bunch of bleed off going on. Don't have glue up in here and all over the place or putting your binding tape over glue like that. It's starting to set up a little bit already. Anyway, keep working that channel, pushing it in. Now, why binding tape? It's low tack. It's tacky enough to hold this, but it's not tacky enough to rip the finish off. There's no sense in doing a binding job if you're going to ruin the finish on the guitar. You get the idea here. You're just going to walk this around and pull that in tight like that. Okay. Again, put it to the side of the guitar, pull it in like that. 
side pull in. You can see it all sitting right here. This is where the time we spent is really paying off now. All right, that side's done. Strip it over and get to work on the other side now. All right, there's side two. We'll let this dry for 12 hours, and then we're going to have some scraping to do to get this all level and all the edges off of it. That's pretty easy if you got the right tools, and I'll show you how to make one even. All right, guys, good morning. We are pulling the binding tape off and by odd coincidence of a skill I learned in second grade I think I've determined there are about approximately 70 pieces of binding tape necessary to do as one side of a binding job on a guitar like this which means there's almost 150 of these little tears. Now, this is the fun part. We need to, I'm having to pay attention. I got to put a door on the shed this morning. So uh, I'm kind of in a doors mood like Gloria. Now, back to reality. There's a couple little stray pieces of binding here that I can use this tool that I cut out of a banding strap from a 48 inch tree box, nursery box, anyway. Notice I rounded the edge off, put a little edge on it, and I can take, look how this works. I just go like this, and that binding edge comes off. I can also come down here and make sure it's flush with the guitar. So. This is not going to be looking square, but I can go along the top like this and flatten it out. As long as I keep my finger over here, I can follow the channel. And we're just going to keep doing this until it's flush with the top. Okay? And I have a lot to do here, and then I'll catch up with you once that's done. But this is a handy tool. Cost next to nothing. All right, guys, the binding is done. There's nothing worse, looking more phony than brand new binding on a 50-some-year-old guitar that looks like it's been at the barrel house its whole life. So you want to go along, you want to touch up the edges a little bit, rough up that paper on that map. See, that's supposed to look like that. And then we get to the front, it's the same thing. This thing's beat up. The binding is nice. It gives a, provides a nice contrast. You just want to go along the edges. You want to make sure there's no glue residue left over and rough it up. So I'm going to put some metal on this guitar. I want to cover this up and rough this up. Where this used to be, it won't be the same shape. I'm going to do the headstock. And I think I got this Allstate oil can. Isn't that nice? What a nasty contrast that is. It's perfect. And then... We're going to start getting down into the details. And okay, guys, let's catch up. We are getting our matchbooks laid out. Furlan Husky Guitar Company. You remember who Furlan Husky was? Well, then you're my age. So anyway... In order to get those matchbooks set up, we need to do the knot. I want to zoom in just a little bit here. The other zoom in. You remember, we did this oil can and beaver nickel and all that going on. And since we raised up the fretboard, um, I'm going to use a thick nut, bone nut blank. And I'm going to put right here. I'm not going to get into all this, but the bottom line is when you cut the knot, you want to leave a tad sticking out. And when you do the edge, 
You just want to lay this flat against the fingerboard, side of the fingerboard like that. And then once you get that off of there, you're going to take a small square and you're going to take that all the way around. Of course, you want to make sure that there's no chips and stuff out of here. Now, when it comes to how tall the nut has to be up off of the fingerboard, a lot of people blow it. They get it too tall. It doesn't need to be that tall. So what you do, little trick here, guitar pick from Guitar 48 has to be from guitar 48 you lay that right there and you can feel that that pick trust me is a tad taller than the first fret you don't want things up too high when they're too high then it's hard to press these down to get buzzing going on you would be surprised at the number of people that have problems here when they think the problem is down that way anyway your half let's get the focus here you see that it's cut in half ground down half pencil I lay that right there with that pick right there and I make my mark just like so. Now, when it comes to when you're all done, you want to curve this over. It's got to be curved over where the side is that comes from the tuners. You don't want it coming up here and button up. You want this to be curved. Easiest way to do that is take vice grips put it towards the end clamp it this way you can take it to a belt sander and roll it and it will roll this edge off finally when it comes to filing the nut slots you want to figure out where everything is going to be and then you take a set of nut files that matches your string size these are kind of pricey but if you're going to do much of this you'll need them Finally, when it comes down to cutting this down, whether it needs to be here or here, the best thing to do, let me zoom out, you're going to take a piece of wood, cut a piece out of it that has straight edges. When it comes time to cut your nut, whether you need to take a little piece off the height or whatever, you put this in here like so and then you put this one like so and then let's say you have to cut just a tad bit right here you can line this up on the bandsaw and because you can hold the thing like this you can push it through same thing with this if you need to cut the end off like so you can just hold this like this and you don't have to worry about cutting your fingers off Two pieces of wood, one smaller than the other. This is permanent yard sale wood, and um, there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and put the nut on this thing now. All right, guys, we are getting done, D-U-N. We've got the bridge in place. We've got the strings on. We have a pickup. Everything is wired. We have a volume and tone control. And now we're getting down into the nitty gritty. So let's walk through a couple things quick. All right, first thing, fret markers. Can we see? Let's look at the camera. Oh yeah, right there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a bit. We're gonna put a piece of tape on it so we don't go too deep in the side of the fretboard. Best to use an awl, but you're basically running this down. It's just a tad, the bit's just a tad bit smaller than this. You run down the flapper tape like that. You can tell when the sandpaper starts to disappear. Now you want to make sure that you're, you're headed at this straight. Because if you don't, you're going to get all sideways and you are going to bust out your fretboard quicker than you can say fretboard. So now we're going to take some Duco cement and we're going to put a little bit of it in the hole. You want to make sure it doesn't take too much. 
You want to make sure you got paper towel there. Work one of these, each one of these individually. And then this frat marker material, white's going to work best here. Sometimes black works better. And then you just pop that up just a tad. You know where it's bottom up. You squeeze that off right there. And then you just push that in. And you take your file until the shape turns around. Now, this fretboard is tore up from the floor up, so it's not really going to matter that much. Anyway, we're going to walk right down the line here and repeat this. All right, fret markers. There we go. Perfect. Now, let's flip this over. Oh, yep, the matchbooks are done. What are we going to do now? We're going to go to the volume and tone potentiometers. I've double nutted them. And I've used my old friend Loctite. Always have paper towel around. Put just a tad right there. And then make sure they're all the way down. Turn them where the player is going to be in the zero position. Put the zero straight up at the bridge. Press that on. And then I'm going to use yellow for tone control. That's done. Now, I've checked my intonation by measuring between the back of the knot and the 12th fret and made sure that that matches right here on this piece of metal. Now, I'm going to do everybody a favor. This is such a wonderful Edwardian finished guitar, whatever that means. I'm going to make a mark on the bridge right in the middle of the bridge, and on this fancy piece of metal. That way, if somebody ever has to take this off, you will know where that goes. See that? Look at that. Isn't that perfect? Okay, now, custom-made pick guard. I have told you that if you put anything metal against the pickup, what's going to happen is this, the pickup is going to turn anything metal. Oh, I got a little bit of solder there. Look at that. That's a nice chisel, isn't it? Anyway, if I put anything metal like that, it's going to turn this whole pickup into a pickup. It's going to turn the license plate into a pickup. So, how do I avoid that? Well, if I want to, I take a piece of cork, cork paper, I stick it on here like so and then I put that just like that and it insulates the license plate and stops it from becoming a pickup there's codependency here like you know like that one person you used to date in high school yeah that kind of codependency okay now I'm going to mount this license plate regular and so, I don't want it rattling all over the place and working loose. So I'm going to take these handy little rubber grommets. Now sometimes you drill a hole and put these in here so you can run a wire. To remember when you used to wire your 8-track tape player into your 1967 Chrysler Imperial. So put these in the hole so the wire goes through so the wire doesn't rub back and forth and short out. Take chick flick teal scissors, and I'm going to cut these like so. Make them nice and thin. Cut them thin, you'll win. Cut them thick. Anyway, got a few of those like so. Now I'm going to take my awl, and I'm going to mount this right here. So I'm going to take my awl, we'll put it here, and I'm going to smack it on top of this fine guitar. I'm going to hold it right there, and I'm going to drill through here, like so. There we go. Now I'm going to take said rubber grommet. I'm going to put it right there, and then 
I'm going to put my screw right there. I'm going to do that in a couple more places. And this fine custom Quebec 56A pick guard is going to be in place. And I want you to notice that I'm getting winded doing this. So the idea is you should do this kind of work when you're young and save more strenuous stuff when you get older. Anyway, I want you to notice something here. This leading edge right here where your fingers are coming down the strings. Ready? Listen. Oh, yeah. I took a very highly technical tool called a dykes that you cut wires with and twist up rebar tie and bent this over. So this is curled over on itself. And then we've got this file where everything is going to be all right, right here. That is the most awesome pit guard you have never seen. All right, when I pulled wire through everything, this was the last thing I did. I pushed the wire through, wired up everything, bundled up everything in a loom, and then I put this in here. And now I've gone through and spared no expense to coat these screws. So they are chick flick teal. And with great ambidextry, I am going to put those in straight I hope isn't this exciting I knew you'd think so all right there we go that is it a lot of work went into this and now we're just going to take to the bench and do one of those ooh ah flybys everybody practice ooh ah okay guys before I show you this guitar I think I should show you the before, and then we'll move into the after. Okay. All right, that was the before. You might have liked it better than what you're going to see now, but this is the after. All right, let's do some handheld work and see how shaky I can get. There is the headstock. Of course, it's got Tammy's signature. It's got them Schaller tuners that were on it when I got it. We left the wood on the neck alone. Um, it looks good. We're going to put some linseed oil on a couple more coats. There's that map of Canada. Eh? I like that. I really took the time to go around and weather those edges and make it look like it's tore up and it's as old as it is as always hey tim loman tim loman of low volts did my logo and i think it's awesome so let's flip this thing around we used an old oil can to cover up the headstock uh, we got a canadian beaver nickel it's got a date on it. It's going to be important. We've got our hoodoo voodoo bead there and our truss rod cover. We've got a bunch of matchbooks from guitar stores. You want to remember, we tore the fingerboard off of this thing and made it thicker so we could get the action up some so we could get this pickup on it. But anyway, I like the way the matchbooks turned out. If you look in there, you're going to see, if this camera wasn't in the way, you'd see the prettiest thing you ever saw in your whole life. Anyway, um, we got this Quebec 1956 license plate. It was in pristine shape. I cut it up, and some people hate that, but that's too bad. And we've got tone and volume control on this thing. Um, the floating bridge... Remember, we did a lot of reinforcement work underneath here to hide where that original bridge peeled off. That's a piece of oil can. And um, we put the trapeze tailpiece on. Again, we beefed everything up there. Um, where's my greaser? There it is. A lot of chick flick teal screws. And uh, I was taking a lot of heat over this about it being... Ronald McDonald color, but it's actually mango <laughs> anyway All 
right. Um, I want to give a shout out to my friend Rob at Guitar 48 in Ventura, cultural capital of the world. I'm going to go see him and um, we'll see what he thinks about this. So, hey, thanks for hanging in there. Uh, the whole motive of this was when you see a guitar laying around and, um, and it's a pretty nice acoustic, but it's trashed. It's trashed. The only t thing you got to waste is your life and time. So I hope I've given you a couple of pointers about how to reinforce things, how to do binding. Don't let binding scare you. Don't let pulling the fingerboard off scare you. Don't let, well, you know what? All of that stuff should scare you. Anyway, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't, and we're fixing to get into the world of some really crazy stuff. We're going to talk about ancient violin uh, refinishing. We're going to be talking about mullets. We're going to be talking about Stradivarius violins. We're going to be talking about the Mississippi River. We're going to be talking about Mississippi clay. Um, and the worst part about it is it's all going to be in the same set of episodes. So, hey, go do something with your life. <laughs> this can't be it, guys, but hey, give me that like. See you See you next time.